Because you never do things wrong. Excuse me, I didn't want to miss the route. Sorry. No, I am. That coffee smells lovely. Got some. Lady. Always getting better now. My coffee aftershave. I beg your pardon. It's my coffee aftershave. Oh, is it? I like you already. Sit down, sit down. Oh, is that what you say? Like Watch out for your coffee. So Shut up. Yeah, is that how you travel? No sugar, no milk. I'm the best, easiest person to make coffee for. That's Black and mate. scrub. I'll do that for you. Right, here we go. Ducky's in the building and we're creating this space. And this space is people can come to and they can engage in however they want to engage with it. And collaborate. I think, I think we approached it as a sort of a collaboration with the residents. I don't think we were posing stuff onto them it was getting people to come in and join in and work with us work with each other and yeah have a good time really we work in a couple of hostels doing arts work with a group of long-term entrenched alcoholics and users who if it weren't for the hostels would be street homeless For me, um, it, it gets really exciting when I'm working with someone who just who discovers something completely new about themselves. The yeah, else, it's about trying to find, you know, those little gems and what people are about in the in the hostels, really, and trying to draw that out and trying to empower people to do it. I think you've got to sort of try and draw that out of people and make people feel comfortable with that. Seeing someone, someone else excited by that excites me. Yeah, you just sit, see, all of a sudden, you just see this passion for something. And it's like they've discovered this whole new side of themselves that they didn't even know was there. And when it works, it can kind of take over everything else. Okay. One, two, three. Tinker Toad closes his eyes when he goes to bed. And when he wakes up again, he began to weep. Oh, Tinkle, <laughs> oh, Tinkle, poor Tinkle, listen, love to me. I pray for, I pray for you, I sing for you a lovely melody. I don't see it as a kind of magic wand, and it isn't a magic wand, so it becomes a kind of much more modest aims, I suppose. You know, as soon as you take that out, and it just becomes more about supporting people who are leading chaotic lives to lead them either less chaotically or with more joie de vivre within that chaos, more fun, more support. I think, you know, any kind of art form is a safe way of expression, of self-expression. It's a safe place to go. It's slow paced. It's very slow, um, and uh, and it needs a lot, a lot of patience. It's about time, patience. It's about listening. The listening is kind of key, I suppose, because you're listening out for all those little clues. Let's have it right. This isn't some pretty politically correct, long-term, recovered drug addict trying to make things sound positive and hopeful. This is a very active, struggling in recovery, regular, occasional lapses kind of guy, giving it to you real, straight up and down, and from the ugliest side of the truth. And I think we were very careful from the outset to focus on the person and not the addiction. And I think from out of that, I think there is a stronger ground for people to be able to self-heal. And I think there's a lot of benefit within that.
she built up these whole fantastic stories and she was she would just be wetting herself with laughter as she was making them and it was just such a joy it was such a joy to be with her when she was doing it she'd just be adding more sort of creating these kind of strange characters like fables almost but they were magical they were just like plucked out of nowhere he liked to sing and he liked to improvise songs. He was a Portuguese guy, but he used to improvise songs in English. So I'd play guitar and he would sing. And this improvised singing became uh, a kind of therapy for him. Creating work, he's just seen something he's created, you know what I mean? And just being appreciated for doing that. You know, he wasn't doing that before we start. Um, I don't think anybody would have been saying that he'll be producing artwork. And on one occasion, a woman who was part of the group, uh, she was upset because her mother had recently passed away and he sang a song directly to her about her mother, how her mother was looking down on her and from heaven and how it's understandable that she should be sad because her mother was a special person and that her family's special and that right that we should be crying at these times and so the group becomes in a way self-supporting you know we make a space and then the group fills it with their own needs and their own responses to the needs of others um, he was making these fantastic landscapes and just and the, the pleasure he got of just putting these colors down and making and, and how he would say look the colors are are alive, they're luminous, they're luminous, these colours. You know, he just created this thing that was, was taking him to a state of euphoria. It was something really, and he came in the next week, right, we're going to do this, and he got all, prof <laughs> all professional with it. It was like, it's just became this thing. And we had a very productive year. Gradually, gradually with us, he was running his own radio station. And he was coming up with all the ideas. He was doing all the interviews, fantastic interviews. It's really, he was a natural because he'd done it before, and he was really finding himself. And then he got moved, and things deteriorated, and he sort of drifted back into all sorts of other stuff. He died in the end, but it was, uh, and we could see it happening. So it was just, it was a tragedy, just totally tragic to. to I can see your hurt. Yeah, just, just went so wrong, really. From memory. Oh, I've heard that song somewhere before, but they were just ones he'd written. He actually wrote the most beautiful songs. And was so adept at coming up with lyric and music that touched right to the heart. He was, he was so so good at just tapping into very raw emotions. And he had a way of just bringing everyone together in the room as well. And don't be afraid Cos you're not alone We all memories of our own. We just tried to create a space where people could create something that has value and I think once people create something that's quite empowering uh, and that can just be something very small or you know just just being interested in people just trying to find out what they're interested in and trying to draw that out and develop that let's do this and then suddenly you are coming with nothing and you're, you're sort of leaving with oh yeah I've got these things I'm interested in it's about valuing yourself and creating something of value and having a confidence in yourself. And thank you very much for your time. Thanks, Gary. Thanks, Helen, from Thames Reach. This is Change FM. Get it on, get it on, get it on. 
even if it means that you know they don't completely lose the addiction, there's a sense of growing as a person through making things, through making art, through making music, writing. There's a sense of finding yourself, and that's a big, big step towards helping to to fight addiction. I think. <laughs>